People of hope, we come today to worship our God, the God who invites us to live and to love in the way of Christ, who sent Jesus to proclaim release to the captives and freedom for the oppressed, and who gives us the strength to fight until all are set free. So let us rise in body and spirit as we praise our God of liberation. So, Holy One, open our hearts, our minds, and our very spirits to receive your goodness this morning and remind us, Holy One, that in Jesus Christ's name, the dawning of God's liberation is already upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. What a joy to welcome you on this beautiful summer's day. I understand that this week we are going to be close to 100 throughout the entire week. Um, and so we are grateful for your presence here this week. Uh, we're grateful for each and every smiling face and for each and every heart that is open to what God is going to do in our worship this morning. Welcome to you all. 
We're so glad you are here. Wonderful, and if you are here with us for the first time, we wanted to send a special welcome. We want to make sure that you feel known, loved, and connected. Um, in the pew is a connect card, and it is in English and Spanish. And if you would fill this out for us, we would love it. Any kind of information you want to give us, um, I know that the red registration pads go through. You can sign in on that as well, but this helps us to kind of get to know you and make sure that we know that you're new and then if you need connections. Please go to the Connect Center. I said connect a lot. You did. It's a good word. It's a connect. good word. Connect. connect. We everybody. want you to feel connect. You get this in exchange for your information, this lovely gift. What do we do? Ooh, see? Very good. Uh, I love the awe at the end. That's just <laughs> warms my heart. You're the best. We're also grateful to welcome each and every one of you who are worshiping online with us this morning. We have folks, as uh, we know, from about 70 countries around the world who join Cathedral of Hope as their spiritual portal. And we're so grateful for you, wherever you are. Know that wherever you are, and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this space. We also want to connect with you, so please do let us know that you've been worshiping with us and how we might be able to reach out to you wherever you are in the world. And if you're on vacation and you are a member of Cathedral of Hope, know that we miss you and we can't wait to have you home. So welcome to each and every one. Please join me in welcoming all those who are worshiping online this morning. And know that if you're watching us on a beach somewhere, we're not at all jealous. No, not at all, no. not at all. <laughs> uh, make sure that you've picked up your Shift magazine. That's our quarterly magazine that lets you know an overview and some details about what's happening for each season. Our summer shift is out. But also know that on page seven um, begins our news weekly. That's the kind of more details, a little more information, just to make sure that once again, you can connect with all the things that are happening. There's always a lot going on. And so following this information is really, really helpful. Um, we also wanted to remind you and let you know that I love love each week that we have such beautiful flowers. Can we give the ministry that does that a hand? We have such beautiful chancel flowers. Uh, this week, those flowers are given by Todd King and Casey Cavalier in loving memory of Casey's sister, Renee Cavalier Fox. Um, it's wonderful that we can continue to remember those who have come before us, remember those loved ones in our life, and we can do it in such a beautiful way. July is anniversary month, and so we want to make sure that you check out all of the information that will be, uh, that is applying to each and every one of us throughout this anniversary month. You can find out a lot more information on page nine of your weekly, so please do make sure that you check out page nine. Also, to remind you that today, uh, we are invited over to Big Owls, which is the barbecue joint uh, just on the edge of our campus. Uh, they are doing a special uh, day. They don't usually open on Sundays, but they are doing a special brunch for us today. Uh, you're welcome to step over there after service. They won't just be doing barbecue. Uh, they're doing a whole uh, fiesta around eggs and mimosas. So uh, please. <laughs> so I was going to bring one up from under here. Uh -huh, no. <laughs> we don't have one back here. That would been great. But uh, we are looking forward to getting over there later on, We're so uh, please do join us. Uh, that's over at Big Owls. And also to remind you that, of course, on the last Sunday of this month, uh, we will be having our community uh, anniversary uh, party together. Uh, that will be at the uh, Frontiers of Flight Museum. And again, you can find out more information about that on page nine of your weekly today. As you know, we're going through our sermon series called um, My Church is Kind of a Big Deal. I like to say, my church is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of good. Um, we remind you that our church is a big deal because, first of all, God is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And because you are all a big deal because you are the church. And so if you want to join Reverend Neal on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock for a wonderful discussion, a lively discussion, I'm told, where you kind of get to know each other, talk a little bit about church, and talk a little bit about how you connect within this space, um, that is something to check out. It's still happening on Tuesday nights. Um, also know that we're beginning our back to school drive. I know it feels midsummer still, but as we know, we are already thinking about the ways in which we can help the youth in our community, especially the youth who struggle, get back to school in a beautiful and meaningful way. And so you'll find more information on page eight about that. Um, also on page 10, um, we are beginning to think about our Pride Parade, what we are gonna do in the Pride Parade. As you know, we're a sponsor this year, and so we want to come big, we wanna go big and not go home. Absolutely. So if you want to be a part of that committee that helps us out, please see the information on page 10. 
And I think this year in particular, it's even more important mm -hmm. that Cathedral of Hope is a sponsor of Pride, uh, especially with a lot of the religious rhetoric that's out there about who is in and who is out. Uh, and so we want to encourage you to uh, think about joining us on the Pride Parade route um, and being a witness um, of God's radically inclusive love. Um, so uh, just to put that in your uh, thoughts and memories. During the month of July, Cathedral of Hope will be celebrating, as we've said, our 48th anniversary. Over the last 48 years, we have worked hard to build and to become a vibrant, inclusive, and progressive community of faith. As we look forward to our future, we invite you to rise in body and spirit now and to celebrate the core values that we seek to live out in our daily life together. Let's affirm our core values together. On page seven. At the Cathedral of Hope, every member is a minister of the church. We believe we are here to serve, not to be served. To that end, we embrace these five core values. We value compassion. We embody the tangible love of a savior who fed the hungry, healed the hurting, and told us that what we did to the least, we did to him. We, we are, are people, people of compassion. compassion. We believe inclusion was a value Jesus held. Jesus came to include, not to exclude. All are welcome around God's table. We are a people of inclusion. We are a people who embrace liberation. We seek to challenge all oppression. By embodying grace, we, we live that our liberation until all are set free. We are a people of liberation. Amid the negatives of this world, we believe in hope. We are people filled with joy and unrelenting optimism because we believe God is good. With God, all things are possible. God can use us to transform the world. We are people of hope. Finally, as a congregation seeking to reclaim the Christ of Christianity, we believe Jesus was the incarnation of God's grace. Jesus was the ultimate radical who resisted the status quo of oppression and showed us the way to the abundant life God intends for all people. We are people of Jesus. Therefore, as a people of Jesus, we gather together in peace and with love. Let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace. Our modern lesson is from God of the Oppressed by James H. Cohn. Hear these words. The Christian community, therefore, is the community that freely becomes oppressed because they know that Jesus himself has defined humanity's liberation in the context of what happens to the little ones. Christians join the cause of the oppressed in the fight for justice, not because of some philosophical principle of the good, or because of religious feelings of sympathy for people in prison. Sympathy does not change the structures of injustice. The authentic identity of Christians with the poor is found in the claim which the Jesus encounter lays upon their own lifestyle, a claim that connects the word Christian with liberation of the poor. Christians fight not for humanity in general, but for themselves and out of their love for concrete human beings. May God bless the hearing of these new words. Amen.
The music reminds us that every life, every life should be a song, a testimony of who we are and where we are and what we are, that we should be allowed to make music even if it doesn't sound as beautiful as the music that is shared with us this day. The psalmist David knew what it meant to make music, to sing and to leap and to dance with joy as he prayed and as he allowed his life to speak. So gather with me now as we pray this morning, inviting that song within our own hearts to reach the ears of the God that we worship. Let us pray. God of many names, the God to whom David would say these words, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Holy and loving God, we come to you from many places, both physical places and spiritual places. We use different names and descriptions and ideas when we talk about you or come before you in prayer or to worship. Some call you wisdom, father, judge, lord, mother, creator, the all-merciful, almighty, and the ground of all being. Some know you as omniscient, omnipresent, Allah, Yahweh, Dios, and Triune, and others as the all-prevailing Eternal. We thank you, Holy One, that you hear our cries, that you heard the cries in a million ways and a billion voices, with the miracle of the entire Thai soccer team rescue and their reunion with their families. The world pauses this day to give thanks. Comfort the family of the diver who sacrificed his life in the rescue. Across every imaginable boundary and dark water, we pray for mercy, miracle, intervention, and protection. We do not fully understand the mystery of prayer or meditation or vigil but we are wise enough to say, thank you, God. Loving God, we offer prayers on behalf of the many known and unknown needs and crises, fears and hurts, and deepest sorrows unimaginable, the looming conflicts that beg for resolution, a release for liberation. God have mercy. Renew our faith, end our division, end our wars and destruction. Bring your peace here on earth. For citizens afraid of government or of other citizens, for neighborhoods under the menace of guns and opioids and gangs, for people weakened by disease, those blinded by prejudice and dominated by fear, we pray. My God, oh God, it can seem so dark in the places of oppression. And yet, like our soccer youth and our coach in Thailand, we treasure your presence of light, a light that surrounds us, and the light that is seen in those doctors, nurses, divers, and soldiers, people of courage and conviction, people with skill who never lose hope. Bless those. Bless us. Bless us and those who live in love, whose love is faith, whose faith is action, whose action is of you. Amen.
hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Then Jesus said to those who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered Jesus, we are descendants of Sarah and Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. An heir has a place there forever. So if the heir, the only begotten one, makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of hope. Amen, indeed, I invite you to be seated. And as on every Sunday, I invite you to open your hearts and your minds to reach beyond yourself to that which is bigger than you and to allow the sense of the holy to bless you in this time of hearing the Spirit. Let us pray. God of all creation, we are grateful for this opportunity to gather together and grateful for the Word that sets us free. Anoint each and every one of us, O God, so that our hearts may be open and our ears ready to receive the good news of a loving God, a God who is with us, a God who transforms us, a God who changes the world through us. And allow that spirit, O God, to make her way through our bodies so that we may embody Christ in the world today. And so, God, in that spirit of openness, in that spirit of goodness, in that spirit of blessedness, I pray now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for those of us who are regulars here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ and for those of us who are here for the very first time, this month we are preaching a series of sermons under the title, My Church is Kind of a Big Deal. Although as many of you have said on the way out as we've left on Sunday mornings, my church isn't kind of a big deal, my church is a big deal. My church is a big deal because we believe that God is a big deal. My church is a big deal because we believe that the Holy Spirit is a big deal. My church is a big deal because we believe here at Cathedral of Hope that the values that we speak and the values that we try to live are the values that we believe Jesus spoke of, taught, and encourages us to live out in our very lives this day. And my church is kind of a big deal because each and every year when we get to anniversary month, we reset ourselves, we rethink for ourselves what it is that we believe, how it is that we are living, and how it is that we are speaking that truth into the world. My church is kind of a big deal, especially in the world at the moment when we really need a gospel of hope and liberation, a gospel that will encourage people to hang on and to hold on in times that seems, in a world that seems so fragile and divided and disjointed. 
My church is kind of a big deal because each and every week we get to gather in this sacred space and to reconnect with one another, to encourage one another, to bless one another, to share peace with one another, and to find ways in that connection that we might make the faith that we speak of each and every week real in our lives. My church is kind of a big deal because, quite frankly, 48 years ago when this church was founded, we should never have survived. But God had bigger plans for Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. And here we are, 48 years later, not only surviving, but thriving as a vibrant, inclusive, and progressive congregation, speaking truth to the world and finding ways in which we might set the people free finding ways in which we might encapsulize this gospel of good news, this greatness of the love of God that is given to all of God's people. My church is kind of a big deal because God is here. And in these 48 years, in this month of celebration, yeah, we might see that we are bragging, but we are bragging on what God continues to do and God who is still speaking in the midst of all that is happening at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. We brag on ourselves so that we might brag on God in the world and allow that spirit of gentleness and humility and forgiveness and passion and compassion to have its way among us. In these last few weeks, we have talked about this values that we believe that Jesus spoke of, values that are embedded into the gospel of good news, and values which, quite frankly, the church universal could once again embody within itself in order that we might know this God that was present in Jesus more than 2,000 years ago. Sometimes I wonder whether uh, the church today is really, really reading the gospel of Jesus. But the gospel of Jesus was always one about compassion. The gospel of Jesus was always one of love. God, the gospel of Jesus was always about building people up and not putting people down. The good news of Jesus was always about setting people free. And no matter who Jesus encountered in his journey, in his life, in his ministry, he found ways to set people free, to find ways that they might see a way when they thought there was no way, and to find their path, their way, their truth, and their light. That's the gospel of Jesus summed up for us, and it is the gospel that we are called to live out in the world. So yeah, my church is kind of a big deal, but the church is kind of a big deal only when we live it out in the world. So today we think about this gospel of liberation, this place, this word, this understanding of a God who sets people free. It seems to me that in our world today we are more concerned with binding people up than we are in setting people free. It seems to me that in our world today we are more divided than we've ever been. And we find ourselves segmentizing our lives and even compartmentalizing our lives into the things that are acceptable to others. J Jesus says that I've come to set you free. I've come to offer liberation and to find a way in which you might embody and embrace this good news of Jesus. And even in the story of the parable in the New Testament this day, Jesus reminds us that the big purpose of the gospel of Jesus is to set us free. Not to bind us up, not to make us feel bad about ourselves, not to lay a guilt on top of guilt, but to set us free to the great liberation of God's love for all of God's people. And here we are, 2,000 years after Jesus' message, and it seems that we have more division and more oppression and more systems of oppression that are so often generated even within the walls of the church. Instead of finding a way in which we will break down those systems of oppression so that truly God's word might come true, that all will be one and all will be set free. 48 years ago, Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ was founded because some people had not been set free. Some people had found a system of oppression that continued to oppress them. Many of us in this congregation identify as LGBTQ or somewhere along that spectrum of God's alphabet people. We find ourselves somewhere along that spectrum. 
And so often we are finding in our world today that we are getting judged for being a part of that alphabet people of God's love. There are many who say that we don't deserve God's love. There are many who say that our continual living in sin has removed God's love from us. What Jesus says is that if we continue to believe that we live in a place of sin, then we are slaves to sin. But Jesus says you have been set free from that place. I do not believe that homosexuality is a sin. There I have said it from the pulpit of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. No more than I believe heterosexuality is a sin. (laughs) But so many of us have forgotten that if the gospel is to set us free, that in order to be set free, in order to find freedom in the world, in order to offer freedom to others, we must first set ourselves free. We must first find that liberation that lives within our own bodies, that we must find that liberation that Jesus sets us free, free to love, free to live, free to be. It is that very essence of of this good news, and yet we spend so much time looking at other people's lives and judging other people's lives and making comments about other people's lifestyles or other people's choices. And I believe we do that to avoid the very necessary work of what Jesus calls us to, bless you, the very purpose (laughs) of what Jesus calls us to, and that's to be about our own personal relationship with God. I often believe that we do so much judging of others because we are fearful of looking at our own lives of thinking about who we are, about thinking about where we are, about where we're on life's journey, and that for some of us it is too painful because of the guilt that has been laid on top of us. Indeed, it feels in our world today that in order to feel good about ourselves, we have to put other people down. In order for us to feel good about ourselves, we have to put other people down. And forget that the good news of Jesus is that we have been made one in Christ Jesus. Not one up here and one down there, but we have been made one in Christ Jesus. There is neither black nor white, there is neither slave nor free, but we are all one in Christ Jesus, the Apostle Paul would remind us. Each and every one of us calls ourselves into this space of liberation so that we might do the hard work that is necessary in our own lives to find freedom in Christ to find freedom of our spirit and to leave behind the baggage of judgment and, and, and the cause of judgment and the cause of guilt that so many of us carry around as if it is on a big trunk in a wheelbarrow that we just want to trundle around and make the world see just how much of a victim we are. Come to set you free. Jesus says it's time to empty that wheelbarrow. It's time to junk it out onto the place of fertilization so that it might mature the ground and offer freedom to other people that we are to let go and to let God to find our freedom. Sometimes I wonder if we know what it would be like to live in freedom. We're so conditioned to live in those places of oppression and persecution. We're so conditioned in a world such as we live in this day to hold on to our baggage as as badges of honor. And yet Jesus says, I've come to set you free. I've come that you might allow the, the God of your understanding to take your burdens and your fears and your heavy ladenness and to lay it on Christ so that we might go about our world as upright, free human beings each and every one of us made in the divine image of a loving God. Not a God who wants to put a millstone round your neck and say, here, that's the guilt I'm going to give you. And then we wear it, honor it. Sometimes we even build altars to it. 
Jesus went into the temple and he destroyed them all and said, do you not understand? I've come that you might be set free, that you might have your liberation, that in this day, in this moment, in this hour, you are free. You are free indeed. And then we get to choose. We get to choose whether we're going to accept that freedom or whether we're going to take our baggage and take it out into the world one more time. Ash Wednesday is a great opportunity for us to lay down those burdens. And all the way through Lent, we talk about laying them down so that on Easter we can rise again to the created beings that we have been called to be and how many of us, even on Easter Sunday, when we've been given the resurrection life, do we pick up our baggage one more time and drag it around the streets? I've come to set you free. What stops us from being set free? What stops us from finding our liberation this morning? What stops us from being all that God created us to be? What stops us from understanding that the sexual orientation of each and every one of us, no matter where we are, is not what God is concerned about? God is concerned about how we live about how we set people free, about how we fight for those who are bodies who are being ripped apart from the, the mother's wombs, from the, from the people who are just being confined in the oppressive systems of our world. Jesus wants us to do something with our freedom. Do something with our freedom. You can be a slave to sin, or you can be free in Christ. I'm tired of being a slave to sin. Oh, I know I sin. I sin. I fall short of God's, God's witness for me every single day of my life. I thank God for confession that I can come and lay my burdens down and get up and walk away from the cross. Or as it says in the version of St. Priscilla, get off the cross, someone else needs the wood. <laughs> Why do we keep putting ourselves back on the cross, sisters and brothers? When Jesus says, come on down, the price is right. <laughs> it's already been paid. Freedom is your gift this day. That's what we've been offered. It's not about what we do in the bedroom or someone else's bedroom. <laughs> Let's keep it real. It's about what we stand for. It's about the values of Jesus. It's about the way in which Jesus has set us free and then calls us to do something. Not just sit in a pew or a chair on a Sunday morning, but to use the freedom that we have been offered to set others free, to speak our truth to the powers of the oppressed, to speak to women who need their voices lifted up so that they might be the powerful human beings that God created them to be. To speak for people of color, black folk and brown folk and yellow folk in our congregation who need to have their voices heard and their experiences validated instead of someone like you and me coming along as in our white privilege and saying, well, surely it wasn't that bad. Yes, it was that bad. And we confess and we repent. This is not the sermon I expected to preach this morning. <laughs> In fact, if you listen to nine o'clock, it certainly was not the sermon I expected to preach. <laughs> but if we are a liberated people, if we are a people of liberation, then in order to liberate others, we must liberate ourselves. We must see ourselves as God created us. The God who on that sixth day created humanity in all of humanity's wonder and looked at Adam and Eve and Adam and Steve <laughs> and Eve and Eve. <laughs> and said, you are Tov, Tov. You are good. You are very good. 
or as Saint Neil Cazares Thomas would say, <laughs> you are fabulous. <laughs> I've come to set you free. Why do we put ourselves back into bondage? <laughs> you know, that bad bondage. Why do we put ourselves back into that place even within five minutes of leaving our church? We're a people of liberation. The gift that we are offered this day is to claim our liberation and to be set free. When I first came out, before God even was conceived, <laughs> I remember the word gay was used. It was the word that was used for everybody. I remember some of my friends always saying to me, why, why did you steal our word? You know, gay meant happy. And I don't know, I, I, I don't believe gay people are happy. Well, would anyone be happy if they're under the oppressed systems that we keep putting ourselves under? But that's a whole different story. And I said to my friends, and I said, you don't understand. The word gay was never a word. The word gay was an acronym. It was G.A.Y. And what it meant that every time I would call myself gay, I was saying, I'm as good as you. I am no better than you, and I am no worse than you, but I am as good as you. We are free in Christ Jesus because we are as good as one another. We don't have to make ourselves better in order to make someone else worse. Liberation is about finding that place of equality with one another, knowing that God loves us just the way that we are. Yeah. Cathedral of Hope, we are a people of liberation, but we can't liberate others until we liberate ourselves. May the God that is with us this day, who celebrates this day of liberation, this day of freedom, this day of seeing yourself and embodying the divine presence of Christ just as you are and rejecting the hypocrisy and rejecting the systems of oppression and rejecting the things that have caused many of us to make unwise decisions about our lives because we based our decisions on guilt and not on love. When we find that place of liberation, we shall be free. We shall be free. We shall be free. God bless you. And live into that freedom, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. Cathedral of Hope, God is good. God is good. And all the time. Now let's continue it. Our penmanship is good. All the time. And all the time, our penmanship is good. Let that be your affirmation this morning as you sign in and update any contact info that you would like for us to have about you. As well, if you have any prayer concerns or any celebrations, we would love to celebrate with you as we pray throughout this next week. As we prepare for our tithes and our offerings this morning, we invite you to turn your attention to the screens. This is why we give. I came to Cathedral of Hope after searching for a religious home here in Dallas and being unsuccessful, finding something that met my needs. I grew up in Minneapolis, um, a Catholic family of nine of us, 11 with our parents. Grew up in a small uh, community-based church that was predominantly black. We had black nuns, which was very unusual. They were from the Oblate um, convent. 
and they were very loving, very nurturing. Uh, everybody in the community went to the church. Uh, had a, a white priest, but we spent a lot of time at the church, preparing the church for service on Sunday and spending time helping the nuns. And I think I was one of their favorites. They used to take me with them wherever they went. Well, when I was about nine years old, we moved to a predominantly white neighborhood. Um, it's very interesting. The church that we went to was not very warm or very receiving. And over time, I kind of fell away from the strong religious uh, Christian foundation. Not the foundation that I had, but the attending of a church because I wasn't able to meet that need. When I moved to Louisville, I was looking around for a church home. And I went to several churches up in Louisville and um, very cold, not welcoming at all, and just didn't feel like that was a place that I wanted to call my church home. And so for a long time I didn't go to church. And one day a couple of friends said, um, there's this gay church down in Dallas and why don't you go with us? And I did, uh, my girlfriend and I came down and started coming very regularly. The warmth, the connectivity that I feel has been very strong always. There's been times when I haven't been able to t attend due to work restrictions but I give, I always give, whether I'm here or not, I've set up on auto giving. And that is my way to make a contribution, uh, whether I can attend or not, a financial contribution. I've also been a member of Code of Colors. I am currently on the bylaws committee. But, and I give wherever I can. Um, I've been a, on the chancel several times doing the readings. And I just enjoy spending time here with my church family and also reaching out and helping others wherever that's possible. Will you join me in prayer, please? Holy One, we are mindful of the gifts that all of our people have, the gifts that you have given us. God, we're grateful for the blessings and the opportunities for transformation in our church and in our community. We seek now your blessings upon these tithes and these offerings. God, remind us that when we give, God creates miracles. Amen. Yeah. 
as Jesus began to think about his departure from the world, he too knew that people needed the reassurance of freedom, a freedom to be, a freedom to live, a freedom to love, and a freedom to live out in the world. All that Jesus came to speak and to teach and to offer hope for. And so as we gather around this table this day, we remember the liberation that is offered to us through Christ, that the price has already been paid, and that we are now commissioned to live in that freedom so that others might be free as well. So at that table, Jesus took some bread. He gave God thanks and praise. He blessed it. He broke it, and he passed it to each and every one of them, and he said to them, Take and eat of this, all of you, for this is my body, broken for you. I recognize the systems of oppression, the systems that continue to help others believe that somehow they are better than others. And I break this bread so that when you eat you might remember freedom reigns in this place. And in like fashion, he took from the table a cup. He gave you thanks and praise. Again, he blessed it and he offered it to each and every one of them and he said to them, take and drink of this. For in those systems of the life that you live, I live, you need to be quenched of your thirst so that our eyes may be opened and we might speak our truth and live passionately the way of Jesus. So take, drink, be filled again and again so that we might live in freedom and liberation. Let us pray. Almighty and liberating God, send the power of your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of grape and grain. Make them be for us holy food that nurtures us in body and spirit, that by sharing this feast, we may know the presence of the living Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as the lay ministers of worship come forward to prepare a place for us all, I remind you that this table belongs to God and it is set for you. It doesn't matter if you are a member of this church or any church. We understand the sharing of this sacred meal in Jesus' name to represent an ancient vision of God's feast for all peoples. And so at the usher's invitation, please come forward.
God of compassion, inclusion, and liberation, today we recommit ourselves to these values and thank you for this feast of grace. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Nothing more beautiful than your four-year-old daughter saying, you're silly, Daddy. <laughs> and so now into God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.